So welcome everyone. And uh, as you may have seen in the description, Henry's doing a demo tonight on color and color temperature. And uh, something that I'm sure we're all looking forward to. I'm Carrie Crystal Schroeder and I'm both a mas uh, member, not master, <laughs> member and a navigator at Masterius. And uh, I'm really excited to be hosting this as well as navigating for Henry's new group, which is due to start on Wednesday, November 1st. And it's 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 Mountain, and on and on, 6 Central, 7 uh, Eastern. And it's all on the page. If you go to Henry's uh, Mastrius mentorship page, you'll find it there. And if you're new to Mastrius, just to let you know, it's a supportive and non-competitive community where growing artists receive monthly mentorship from your choice of mentor or professional or master or professional artist. Each artist's membership takes place in small groups up to a maximum of only eight people. And weekly events are open to the whole Mastery's community. There are still some spots left in Henry's group. And so if you are interested to go to masteries.com and you in the menu, you can select find your member and type in Henry's name into the search group. And you can read about more about his experience and expertise of which he has plenty and including color and doing technique uh, demos, which we'll see in just a few minutes. Um, Masterius is all about connecting. So during Henry's demo this evening, if you have questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you're also welcome to write your question down in the chat and I can read it out to Henry as well. Uh, now I'll just give a little bit of introduction about Henry. He's uh, dedicated his life to the world of art. He's nurtured budding talents and crafting mes and crafted memorized mesmerizing works of art. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska and lives in the Pacific Northwest. With over three decades of experience as an artist, um, he started at Washington State, went on to the Art Institute of Seattle, and then spent four years of intense apprenticeship with Russian Impressionist painter Ron Lucas. His career has spanned various car, his teaching career has spanned various colleges and private owned institutions and impacted countless aspiring artists. His teaching philosophy, which I really found interesting, uh, centers on helping students uncover their unique gifts and abilities through the language of art. He believes in laying a strong foundation by imparting the fundamentals, enabling students to connect prior knowledge with new skills and make informed decisions. His classroom is a space where fear is replaced by experimentation and mistakes are celebrated as essential steps in the learning process. Um, he encourages students to embrace the idea that art is not about perfection, but about the harmonious fusion of hand, eye, and mind, and understands uh, that true art transcends mere technique, and he aims to evoke emotion, fostering a deep connection between the artist and their audience. Um, he's got some innovative methods to expand his students' perspectives and challenges them to experience art physically using their entire body to create line and form. And uh, he also instills the, which instills the confidence needed to be fully present in the creative process and breaks down preconceptions, occasionally encouraging students to experience drawing with their non-dominant hand. And he guides them towards a deeper understanding of the truth in their observations. Um, it's his passions fueled by his own artistic journey, which has taught him perseverance, courage, and unwavering faith in the unseen. His work transcends ordinary sight, capturing unique moments that linger on the edge of memory, and his ability to translate these moments onto canvas, where just about done, garnered him recognition. Look, I am thankful we're almost done. <laughs> I know. He's got uh, pieces in the collection of corporate leaders and private art enthusiasts alike. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce and Henry and the floor is yours. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. And You're welcome. Probably one of the toughest things to do. <laughs> sit there and listen about myself. All right. I know. I know. All right. So I think the gist of this is I was going to talk about color and sort of warm light versus cool light and sort of the Sort of the precept of it all is if you have warm light, your shadows tend to go cool. And if you have cool light, your shadows go warm. Things work in contrast. So, okay. so with that sort of beginning with that, let's I've, I've been practicing this week shooting video. So, you know, normally I don't 
tough time shoot shoot myself painting so um let's see screen share um basic desktop come on let's see files basic might have to get debbie on this all right yeah so give me a second here let's see if i Deb, I hit share, <laughs> it's screen share. So now what? Let um, me oh grab the mouse. Yeah, just hit share. Just hit share. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then everything that's on your desktop will show up. Well, yeah, but all everybody's photos are over at the top. I need to move them. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go cool light or warm light? Uh, let's go warm. Oh, it's fine. Whatever. Click on whichever one. That's good. Okay. I'll be zipping through that one. So, all right. Does it load quickly? Well, you know, nothing on my feet, you know, who knows? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> it's just loading. Yeah. Henry's got a much slower computer than I'm used to. Well, it seems, <laughs> fast. It seems fast to me, so, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Mm, all right, so. Ah, all right. Well, this one, I've already done the warm light. All right, so the warm light, little sketch. And here's a cool light sketch. And I little, uh, da, da, da. So, you know, I've... I've done a, a wash on my canvas got rid of the white i tend to prefer to use blue because i engage color relationships on blue better than any other color so then i is draw that for both sorry henry is that for both the warm and the cool you put blue on both, the background yes, yeah oh okay Especially, you know I, I you know if i do it the same i don't have to think that much this is a always an yeah. advantage yeah so, yeah so Got to draw on first thing first. I usually block in shadows first. Now, in this instance, unfortunately, when I shot this video, I, I thought I had the palette on here. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the palette. You get a little bit of a glimpse of the background color. Now, on the red with a cool light, the shadows go warm. Now, red is traditionally warm color. But oftentimes I have burnt umber on my palette. And burnt umber mixed with red, it's really nice. It drops the value of the red, but at the same time, it warms it up. So if we push the warmth, especially in a cool light setting in the shadows, it gives our light a better chance to sort of react with the shadows. So. Dun, 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 dun. And what colors um, you're using, burnt umber and red, are those primarily the two colors you're using at the moment? No. Oh, you know, uh, let's see. I've got to mix this one. Uh, I pick, you know, I actually probably what would be great is if I actually pulled up a shot of my palette so you could actually see the colors I have. But let's let's whip through this quickly. Okay. And then, all right. I've got the other. And so your light, you've changed your light. Like, do you have a light that shines daylight and warm light, like the same light you can I've shine got, on? Got, you're still I've got, two, I've got two lights. Okay. Yeah, I've got two lights on my light stand. So okay. here's my light pole. Here's my okay. light pole. And I've got a warm light. And when I painted it warm light, I had that one on. Yeah. And I turned it off and I turned the cool light one on. Okay. Now, generally, when I studied, when I studied with Ron, we traditionally, most generally still lifes, still lifes were lit and warm. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally, whenever we painted the model, we always painted the model under cool light. Okay. Because the majority of painters, you know, if you look, a lot of people paint under warm light. Mm -hmm. Warm lights, you can get a pretty good little system going. Mm -hmm. Um Whereas with cool light, yeah, I think you have to think a little bit more. And occasionally, you know, Ron would, you know, uh, throw in a warm light periodically so that you got out of the habit of mixing certain ways or doing mm -hmm. things without thinking. Sometimes, like, you know, like if you drive the same way home every day, so oftentimes the robot takes over. Yeah. 
you get in your car and all of a sudden you're home and you don't remember the drive to home, you can have that can happen in any aspect of life. Yeah. And especially like painting, if you start mixing, you might start mixing the same colors. Yes. Or similar situations, not even thinking. So yeah. So what did you was it I know you said you used the 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 burnt umber and the red mostly to make the the red on the object right. on the dolls. Uh, well, on the, on the deep, on the deeper red. Yeah, on the deeper red. But and so, how would you make the shadow? Like, what what did you use? Colors did you use uh, to make with the, the shadow? With the shadow, I do believe I used um, alizarin, uh, maybe a little quinacridone red, a um, little bit of had red, and maybe a touch of black. So I pretty colorful it. shadows. Yeah, well, you know, you usually try to push, start strong. Okay. Start strong. Let's see. So stop, stop, share. All right. So I'll get the hang of this. It's been, um, okay, share. Let me see here. There. Can you see that? Can you see the, the palette? Yeah. All right. I need to clean my palette a little bit. So I've been busy. All right. So I am right handed. So this is okay. my palette is set up for a right handed person. Mm -hmm. Anybody here left handed? No? Okay, good. I'm happy about that. All right. Don't like left handed people. All right. <laughs> um, no, I'm joking. Let's see. All right. So bottom. Bottom right, I've got titanium white. Okay. And I've got a large pile of white. And the reason I keep the white there is because generally when you paint, your paintings tend to be 50 to 75% white. Wow. So white's probably one of the most important pigments on your palette. You know, I see okay. people buy, a lot of the students buy cheap white. Don't mm -hmm. buy cheap white, buy a good white. Okay. And I like my white. It's got it's got good body, but it's still mm -hmm. somewhat fluid. Yeah. Um, and I buy it in I buy it in quart cans. Okay. Or Is it gambling cans. that you yeah, buy? Liter, yeah. liter cans in Canada, I suppose. Um I uh, know it's a RG, RG, RG uh, oil. Oh paint. yes. I know. I've heard of those. Uh, yeah, I like I used to get gambling. Um mm -hmm. And I get a couple, I think I get one color still in Gamma. Yeah. I get a lot of Graham oils. I like I like their their consistency. And then yeah. sometimes I get a Utrecht too. So Okay. Um all right. So the next one we've got a cad yellow light. This is really dirty. And then I've got yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. And I actually I I've ran out, but I need to make a paint order. But I added actually burnt sienna. It's like okay. a deeper orange, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't have that on this palette. So then next okay. I've got my cad orange, mm -hmm. and I've got cad red, and then I've got naphthol red. Okay. And naphthol red is, is a modern, it's a modern pigment. Um, whereas with the cad, when you add white to it, and mind, I have a good cad. The more white you add to it, they it will the term they will use will gray the color out. It'll lessen its intensity, depending mm -hmm. on how much white you get. Well, with mm -hmm. the naphthol being a dye-based pigment, it mm -hmm. doesn't it doesn't gray as easily. So oftentimes I can piggyback the CAD on the on the naphthol and get it to get it to have a little bit more oomph. Okay. And they is almost look pretty close. Yeah, I was going to say close, that. but in a but in a mix, unfortunately, I I don't have the mix here. But in a mix, the the naphthol is cooler, a cooler okay. red, whereas okay. the cad tends to be warmer. Okay. So say like in the cool light setting, if I had a red, I could lean to the for the light more of the naphthol. Okay. Cooler red, okay. and the next one I've got is alizarin or alizarin permanent. And then quinacridone red. Okay. Um, I have some students that like quinacridone magenta. I yeah. 
started using that, but I did not like it as well as clonacridone red okay. because with clonacridone red, you don't you don't have a blue component to it. So it does real well in mixes of warm colors and also on the cool side of the palette. It will mix well with both. It communicates very, very easily with both colors, okay. both both sides of my both sides of my palette. And then the last one is burnt umber. Okay. So and then let's see. I wonder if I can just click on this and see if I can. All right. This is is quinacridone red cooler or more blue than the alizarin? Because I thought it was uh, more like... The alizarin's deeper. The uh, alizarin's but it's not deeper, cooler. Little, you know, well, the quinacridone's got more oomph to it. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, there we go. Can you, see the, now, can you see the cool side of the palette now? Yep. All right, good. Okay, so, all right. So this is my left side of my palette. Where I've got my cools. So mm -hmm. I've got... In the lower left hand corner, I've got Mars Black. Okay. A lot of people like prefer, I think, ivory black, mm -hmm. but they don't make ivory black anymore. Okay. Yeah. They call it ivory black. Right. But it's bone black. Okay. The lesser black. Now the Mars black is a modern black. Okay. And it's got it's got far more power uh than than ivory black okay and i consider blue excuse me i consider black part of the blue side of the palette okay so you're not afraid of black on your palette a lot of people will so not put black the last, on their palette. i love black okay i like it too black, black is misunderstood okay it just really is sometimes it's just abused as a value change <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the next color I've got is ultramarine blue, mm -hmm. red blue, and then next I've got a cerulean blue hue. Okay. I learned that when I was studying with Ron, we had real cerulean. Yeah. And real cerulean gets muddy very quickly, and okay. had very little. Yeah, it grades so amazingly quick. Just yeah. irrit just irritated me. Now, if I'm going to spend sixty dollars for a tube of paint, I'm mm -hmm. not going to get something that makes mud. Right. And so this is actually sort of a convenience color. I mix my own. <laughs> all the all the cerulean hue is just white and phthalo blue. Okay. So you, you can see there's some white around it. Yeah. I drop I drop a pile of white there, then I grab some phthalo blue and I mix it in. Okay. So my so my cerulean blue changes. Depending on how much I mix in with it, it's not a it's not a big deal. It's sort okay. of like a, it's a convenience color. Yeah. Uh, the next one I've got uh, is cobalt blue, which That's is all expensive these days. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's the same as a real cerulean. Okay. And I'd rather spend money on cobalt than cerulean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing's nothing's cheap anymore. <laughs> so, so a few few tricks. Okay. And the next I've got. Thalo blue. Mm -hmm. No, no, no yellow shade, red shade. I, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's just funny the, the directions they go with things. I just, I'm just like, when I get stuff, I just want Thalo blue. Right. I don't, you know. So and the next one is Thalo green, yellow shade. Okay. Because, you know, if I need to go blue, I can add a little bit of Thalo to it. So, and then the last is the dioxine purple. Okay. And okay. actually, I use that to make brown mm. you take dioxine purple and orange and you mix them together i can get any range of brown i need oh, by adding other colors into it okay. that's why i don't have it you know i see people like like 60 60 browns on their palette heaven help you all right good for you all right so let's see what is that I a glass palette henry no it's plexiglass Acrylic. okay you, you can't okay. say you can't say plexiglass anymore because if you if you go and you order it from a company you go I'd like a plexiglass strap we don't have plexiglass so all uh, right I would like acrylic please <laughs> it's the okay. same thing this is yeah so let's see I've got let me see I've got I think this is it hold on tight here ah there we go all right let me see I got a there we go. 
Okay, we're talking about a little bit of a mix. Now here's here's the purple and there's the orange. And you mm -hmm. kind of see sort of I go through a, a range of different browns. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to, I could pull green into that, pull red, whatever color I needed it, I needed to just shift it to. So and at this, I I did this sort of I mixed a black and white, got a gray. Mm -hmm. I put one spot of gray in the middle of that. And that kind of looks a little bluish. It does. And then here I put it here and it almost appears yellow. Yeah. Got a little yellow, yellow tinge to it. Mm -hmm. And this has got a little cooler but darker. So yeah. that's a, those three are the same color. That's the same color. It's amazing, that, isn't it? That's the same color. So all your relationships, your colors depend on what is around it. Okay. No color exists by itself. They yeah. swim and all swim in the same sea. Yeah. So if you're just throwing a color in there, you know, it, it's going to affect other colors and such. So, all right. So that's got a little bit of mixing in here, but let's mm -hmm. see. And, and there we go. And that. All right. So let me. <laughs> All right, so this I'm gonna I'll play a warm light uh, uh, sketch I did. Now this one, my dog who is tofu is just about a year old. She's a bull terrier, and so our our weather has gotten colder here. So I didn't have the door of my studio open, so she wanted out. So I had to stop the video. So this way it's in three parts. <laughs> she wanted out, then she wanted in, then she, you know. So it's like. Uh, so yeah, I know. Yeah, she was my daughter's dog, but now she is my dog. Did you inherit her? Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. so she, she, she follows. She's, she's my constant companion. So. Oh, that's nice. It is at times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. So got a little bit let me actually move that down so i can see what okay so i'm gonna go oh yeah i'm drawing like i said if anybody have any questions please yeah. feel free to ask I, I always tell my classes there are no stupid questions just a lot of yeah. inquisitive idiots so. <laughs> that's good yeah so. And will you be doing demos like this during the mentorship as well? Well, what I'd like what I'd like to do, and what I did what I did when I taught figure drawing is, if I was giving an assignment, mm -hmm. I would do a video of the me doing the assignment. Okay. Just to give the, just to give the students an idea of sort of the direction direction I wanted them to go or what I wanted them to focus on. Mm -hmm. Because pretty much, you know, you're left to your own devices for the most part. Yes. Although, like I said, if you're if I am mentoring, you are you are more than welcome to contact me if okay. you have a question. So okay. I don't hide my contact information. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. So. Yeah. And will you make? Will we be doing? Do you ever do exercises live, like would in class, or or is it? Well, we sure, I'm certainly could. <laughs> I mean, it's not really class; it's mentorship. But there, it, there's lots of new learning taking place. So yeah, you know, with you, yeah. Oh yeah, this first one is just drawing. Yeah, it's because the dog. I, she was she was being very insistent. So <laughs> yeah. And this is the warm like, light. This oh, is sorry, the go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask if you typically have like a pencil sketch underneath your sketches. Oh, no, or, I, just, um... I just I just draw with the brush. OK. Yeah, I just draw with the brush. I don't Um, sometimes prior to like it, this is just a demo. But I like say if I was going to I was planning a painting out, oftentimes I will work out paintings in my sketchbook prior to actually doing doing them in sort of in gouache and watercolor to get an idea of the direction I want or what I'm looking for. And then then when I start in oil, I have an idea what I want. Um, it's not in stone, but so I when we I learned to paint, we you you started with a brush. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And what are the mediums? Are you using uh, like thinner, um, Henry? Well, I've, got, I've, got Gamsol. I've got Gamsol to clean my brushes. Um, this is where my brushes are sticking in the in the Gamsol, right? Is visually across the palette. Um, and then I've got in the little container, the center of my palette is my medium. Okay. That I and what do you use for that? It's a homemade recipe. Ah. That I've been making for since early nineties. Um, that's in the brown bottle over here. Mm -hmm. My medium. Um, certainly, I could. You know, uh, if you have a, what I do is I take a quart of linseed oil, mm -hmm. um, or you could have a liter of linseed oil, depending on where you, where you're from. Mm -hmm. So I take three quarters of that. I'll drain a quarter off put in another container. So in that, in that container, so three quarters linseed oil, one quarter, I put what I varnish my paintings with. Mm. So I use Soluvar by Liquitex. So mm. I put a quarter of, quarter of the, fill the rest of the bottle with that. And then I put a cap full of cobalt dryer. Oh, wow. Now, the cobalt dryer I get does not have any solvents in it. Dan Smith used to sell it a long time ago. Mm. And the, the pint that I'm using, I bought back in 94. So it and lasts I, a while. It's Yeah, I think I've still got maybe two inches in the bottom of that. So it lasts for quite a while. And then uh, I was doing demos over at Dan Smith and they were getting rid of all their stuff and they had a, another pint of it. So I bought it. Okay. So I'm good till they plant me. So, <laughs> yeah. So that's it, you know, so he certainly, like I said, Dan Smith doesn't make it anymore. And I could suppose you could use the stuff that's thinned. You could put it, put it in with, but I like having a little dryer in mine. Okay. Um, you know, I, as you periodically, you see me dip in and mix it in with everything that I'm doing mm -hmm. so that everything on my canvas dries uniformly. Okay. I don't overdo it with it, just a little bit, but I like to paint dry, wet on dry. And okay. so like if I have a, you know, if I have a setup, generally the next day or the day after, it'll be dry, dry enough that I can paint wet on dry. Okay. I love some of the things I can do that way. So, and okay. a lot of times if I've been out plain air painting, plain air painting outside, mm -hmm. I like that too. So, okay, come back the next day and, and work on work on the same canvas. So, all right. So this one there. All right. So let me close that one. Then I'll open this one. All right. Here we go. So. All right, so first thing I'm going to start going for the shadows. Now, this is the the color of the light influences the light struck areas of whatever you're painting. And this is a very yellow light. So the shadows tend to oftentimes work like complements. So, you know, like lavender. So in the purple range. So we've got yellow light sort of purplish here let me pause i guess and let me go too quickly here now here i've mixed a lavender now i've got mm -hmm. deoxyne purple over here i could easily go over there and grab that and get purple couldn't i mm -hmm. certainly certainly but i would never do that because okay. i like mixing my own lavenders because what i end up getting here is i probably i use quinacridone red and then the cerulean hue mm -hmm. and a little bit of green in there and I don't over mix. Okay. So that when I put that brush stroke down, that oftentimes will have three or four colors in it. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so that it'll read as that color, but it also has a vibrancy that you don't lose by over mixing. Okay. All right. So it's almost like the impression is like the broken color a little bit. A little bit. See. But the Russian and Ukrainian impressionism, a little bit bolder strokes, a little okay. thicker. 
a little thicker, a little, a little bit more bravado per se. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you know. Like I said, when I when I found Ron, that was um, I went to he had a, used to he used to have a an open session in his studio. So I remember going, and then I saw his work, and I thought, this I got it. I've got a this guy I got to study. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I, and at that time, I didn't even know that you know <laughs> there was Ukrainian impressionism or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother had immigrated from the Ukraine. Oh, interesting. Family at the turn of the century, yeah. So, because I used to remember her making the Easter eggs and all that. Right, they, they're you know, so beautiful. Yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah. So, this is all the cool so far. You, that's what you this start is, with, right? Yeah, yeah. This is the shadow. This, I'm building the shadow that's in that the mm -hmm. that is cast by the skull. So. And I okay. noticed with the cool oh, light, you've got that dark blue on the side, Henry, of, um, you know, of the, where uh, your setup is. Well, Does this, that affect the shadows? Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Good question. Well, you know, shadows take on adjacent colors. Uh -huh. I remember when I was studying, trying to find the shadow color was always oftentimes the most challenging. Yeah. Um, I find that. If you start looking around whatever it is you're painting, you'll come up with the components of that shadow. Okay. So like the light is bouncing off of that blue fabric. Mm -hmm. Actually, this is, hold on here. Let's, let me get my arm out of the way here in a second. Drop, drop it, thank you. All right. All right, here, this, this piece of fabric here by the skull, you can, it has a warm light on it. Yeah. So, and look at, over on the seat of the chair, mm -hmm. that has that has a cool light on it. Very different. Very different. The same piece of fabric. Yeah. Right. Oftentimes, like you said, when I'm looking, when I'm painting, you know, and if I'm looking at a blue, I don't look at it in isolation. I'll find several other blue components, even though it may not be in my painting, to compare it with. So, like here, I can go. Wow, this is this blue little it's not that it isn't a red blue but it's not as red as reddish as this one yeah. well this one's got a little bit a little yellow on it too so you can use that to compare to get because this will actually reflect into the shadow on the skull okay so all right so And with your palettes, however you, whatever colors you use or whatever you, how you set your palette up, I always recommend setting it up the same way every time. Okay. I've been laying my colors out like this since 1990. So okay. I muscle memory. You know, if I'm painting in my sleep, my arm is going to where the colors are. I don't even have to think about it. Yeah. You know, I always That's use, a good idea. like, you know, if you're learning to play a piano and they were changing, every time you took a lesson, they changed where the keys were. Your learning, your learning would go dramatically down. Yes, that's very true. All right, so now we're getting on, getting, getting some, working on the lights. And I try to, when I, when I block in a canvas, First, I block in the shadows, and then I block in the light passage. Now, I try to work in a three to seven value range. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to paint my lightest lights or my darkest dark shadows. Sort of, in the, I want to work in that middle range. Okay. Because uh, mostly, I'm I'm going to make sure that you know I get the colors working harmoniously to begin with. Right. I can probably hear it speed up. And that was your red again that you put out? Yeah, that is. Yeah, it's probably the, as dark as it is, I bet that was alizarin. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bit like 
painting is a little bit like cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to taste, you have to taste it as you go. Right. It's like putting the, putting the paint, mixing it, what you think it is on your palette. And then when you put it up on the canvas, um, it's a little bit like tasting when you're cooking. Right. Need a little like bit more. adding spices or yeah. Yeah. So. Although I had That's my. That's a blue gray up there. Uh, that is actually a. It's a it's a it's a lovely green greenish purple. Okay. You know it's actually it's funny in that you know um, I can mix. Oftentimes in nature you find uh, yellow purples, and okay. you know. So when people say you can't mix, you can't mix compliments. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily true. Um, I oftentimes will mix. If I need a yellow purple, say I take the quinacridone red, and then I take my phthalo green and some white between them and mix them together. Get a lovely, lovely yellow lavender. Oh, okay. Beautiful color. And then if I needed to go more yellow, um, it depends on which way. If I needed in the green side, I might go on the green door. Because when I mix, I often, I don't just dive bomb into a color. You see some people, they drop a color. Like, they'll, like I, I'm going to put a little red in this green, and they'll drop it right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. There's that color up. This is, oh, well, that's, oh, well. So I usually put it, pull it in, push it on the side, and pull it into it. Okay. It gradations of color variation so i tie everything together now this is the end of this video now um this was it I, the, once again my dog is misbehaving so i turned the video off and i thought i returned it back on mm -hmm. it was an automatic clicker but it didn't so okay. what i did is today mm -hmm. I, I and i did some more work over the top of the of the painting Okay. So we'll start with that one here. So we had skipped a bit. All right. So and it's actually funny is earlier today I I made sure that everything was okay on these. And mm -hmm. the reason it had saved them upside down. <laughs> but I checked. So um all right. So here we go. Is there a way to maximize that? Mm -hmm. um, is it, um is it really small it's it's a little small <laughs> asking the wrong guy all right um uh, let me i don't i don't know no that's Just okay like, yeah sorry that's okay i'm sure we can see pretty well what you're mixing and we can see your your painting as well and if anyone has any questions, I know I my, iPod, my iPad vertically. So I uh, it vertically. Right. You know, so yeah. Yeah. That's and that's a pretty is that a pretty much a, a white with a dab of uh, oh, no, red or orange or it's got cad red in it and it's got cad yellow light and a little white and also a little uh yellow ochre. So okay. I want from the light up a little bit, so I started pushing. Okay. So. Henry, so. if you had been doing that demo in one shot, would you have just kept painting this on top, or would you would is this normally what you do? You said you like to paint wet on dry. You're just so you would have. If it's a demo and you've got you've got X amount of time, you just you do what you do and you finish. You finish it fairly broadly. Yeah. There's certain things you can do, uh, wet on wet. And other things, like I said, like this is fairly dry, hmm. fairly dry painting, because I was fairly consistent with my medium throughout it. Okay. And does that rule always hold true with warm light and cool shadows and cool light and warm shadows? Yeah, it does. Okay. You know, oftentimes myself, I like setting up multiple lights when I paint. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it just makes I like I like a greater challenge. <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, 
And some of it is that probably the biggest thing to the, the biggest thing that'll help in your growth is learning to trust yourself. Okay. You start to see when you start to see the color. Um, I remember when I was studying with Braun and he would come in and work on your canvas. You know, you've been struggling it for the, you know, and he'd come and work on it. And I'm going, you see that color? He says, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You know, after a time, you know, obviously I hadn't, I hadn't drank the Kool-Aid or whatever. I started seeing it too. Okay. You know? And so it's when you start, like you said, you start looking, looking with those, just those basic rules, warm mm -hmm. light, shadows, mm -hmm. light, warm shadows. And oftentimes too, look, when you're looking at like a, a shape of color that you're painting, up on the subject, whatever it is, look to the edge of the color. Don't look to the middle of it. Okay. Because you'll oftentimes you'll see more of that. The con <laughs> there's the dog. Yeah. There. Little cameo there. Little, little nose in there. Yeah. Yeah. Checking up on me. She probably grabbed something off my palate. <laughs> um. Yeah. So look to the edge of the color rather yeah. than the straight Edging. in the middle compare you know because if you look at just anything in isolation you can convince yourself just about anything okay it's only by comparing and oftentimes you don't see me <laughs> comparing my eyes are going comparing all over the place and two is like i said i i like working from life or memory uh, occasionally I occasionally I've worked from photos um I hear a while ago I did that uh that picnic table that I donated yeah I had the cow and the pig and the, with the cow know. and the pig I love that painting I yeah looked, I looked at several photos and built built that pose from from that okay take it straight from a photo and I never and I would never trust a photo with color. Camera so just... did you base your color just on on what your imagination and your past experience? Is that kind of how you chose your colors for that? Well, I've painted I've painted cows out in life. Mm. So I know how color, especially outdoors, if you're painting something outdoors, you really mm. have to match the color to make it seem like it's it's outdoors. And two, the the sky in that painting was outside my studio window. Okay. So I painted the sky from from life. Right. You know, Which and then I certainly had, helps. Yeah. Both thing. I had my daughter hold it over the yard and took a shot of it. Okay. So I, I have a little little flying metal flying saucer. So yeah, I saw that. Yeah. How the the light affected it. Oh, that's that's so a they, great idea. Down, the grass bounced up into it, illuminating the bottom of it a little greener. So yeah, so that's great. So and two, like I said, when I start, like I'm starting to work some of the darker accents. Now, even in a cool light setup, most generally the dark accents go warm. Okay. You know, don't do a Renoir and uh, get carried away with ultramarine blue. Oh, is that what he did? Yeah. So, you know, if he had more friends, they would have taken it away from him. <laughs> so. And and so um, about, like, what do you do for assigning homework generally? Are there things that you suggest then, like, each month that you would suggest for uh, I, people to do? or That up. And it's mostly about, you know, developing good habits. Um, oftentimes, like I said, in, in, oftentimes in classes, I've said, okay, you know, you, let, let's say you have to go to, you know, you're going to the dentist and you have to, you have to sit in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, first thing you said, in the, I want you to think about what if you had to, what if you were painting that room? Okay. What, what is the light? Is it cool or warm? Oftentimes look at the highlights on things. Oftentimes you'll see the color in the highlight because sometimes now, Nowadays, with LED lights, it can be a little bit more confusing. 
but generally, yeah. you know, I can look at the highlights and I can tell if it's warm or cool. Okay, so once you determine if it's a warm or a cool light, then decide, okay, what colors are the shadows? Hmm. And so work, work the painting through in your head. Even though you may not have your gear with you, you can still paint it in your mind. That's a great idea. Well, you know, years ago they did, I remember, I don't remember who did the study. It was on free throws. They, they had three three groups. They had a control group, control, control group A, B, and C. Control group A shot free throws every day. Uh, mm -hmm. B didn't shoot at all. They just let them do whatever they wanted to. And mm -hmm. C visualized it. They visualized shooting. Okay. I think in a month's time, they got them together and they they shot again. When they first shot, they were, almost everybody was equal. Mm -hmm. So uh, people that shot every day, uh, they were slightly better than the group that visualized. Wow. Just a slight percentage difference. And the group that uh, didn't do anything, they're obviously their numbers plummeted. Wow. So, but doing it in your head can oftentimes help. Because oftentimes, yeah. you'll, I, you know, I usually take a sketchbook with me wherever I go I am. Okay. So see something lighting-wise that I really like, I can make notations for it. Mm -hmm. You know, a certain, if I see somebody with a certain style and, yeah, so. And two, like here I've got, Remember I talked about three to seven range? Yep. So even though this is a little overexposed, um, you, you just, you drop the value of your light. So then you, when you mix your highlights, they actually pop on your, on your painting. Okay. So, you know, if you go too light, you know, if you put all your money on red 13 and let it roll, you yeah. don't have any range. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have that range. Okay, so even though you were seeing a lighter white in the beginning, you just didn't paint it that way, so that your highlights would would pop later on. Is that? Yeah, and then too here, you can see it on the underside of the orbit. Mm -hmm. Are just bouncing up in it on the yes. under on the under planes. This are catching the orange light. Yeah, I saw you putting orange in there. That that really it's. The uh, the sockets have such depths where you got them, uh, where you painted it. It's it's amazing. You can really see they feel so hollow, and you know, but you can see the light and the shadows. Well, you know, it's interesting in that you know components of components of color. You've got value. Mm -hmm. You've got chroma, the intensity of the color, um, and then you've got temperature. And you know, it's funny is that I've, I've been in situations especially outdoors, where the shadow and the light were the, almost the same value. Okay. So a value painter would be lost. They wouldn't know what to do. Right. right. But if you deal with temperature, the temperatures were dramatically different. You know, cool oh, light, interesting. shadow. And you could have the values almost, like even here, the value between this shadow and this light, it isn't that great. No. But the temperature is fairly dramatic. So it'll read, one will read a shadow, one will read its light. It really does. Does anyone have any questions? You Feel free to ask. And it's whether it's Henry's demo here or about his uh, his mentorship or what you might learn, feel free to uh, jump in, anyone. Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, especially with, you know, everybody, we sort of walk in our own path, mm -hmm. what you may be interested in, um, you know, uh, as I said, I studied with Ron and this, <laughs> um, Ron and I had, I loved how he approached things and how he worked, which was great, mm -hmm. but we had definitely different sensibilities okay so you know so certainly even the people i studied with too we've all sort of gone our own way you can yeah. see you can see sort of a, a thread kind of tying us together yeah but you know 
color is color is universal. You know, if you're, you know, you're looking at uh, like uh, Rothko or you know some of those color fields, things like that. So, yeah, um, yeah. No, not done yet. <laughs> cool. Here well, I can, it's a what's I can, nice, I think, with the with the mentorship is that there's only a maximum of eight people. So even if, as you say, people have different sensibilities, you can address everyone's needs. Um, well, you, too, you know, don't, you know, don't hesitate. You know, if you have a, a question about a direction you want to go or something like that, that, that I can uh, help with, I am more, more than happy to um, your assignments that way. A lot of times, like you said, in, in, you know, in class, I get a sense of, you know, where, where everybody is, where you mm -hmm. are, really, you know, which way you need to be pushed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if you have a tough time, you know, um, finishing, you know, uh, you know, make you finish, make you finish a painting for better or for worse. doesn't matter yeah. if you, some of the, some of the, the paintings I learned the most on were the mm -hmm. biggest flops. Right. You know, I I remember I used to take a, a utility knife with me to class, mm -hmm. so that when I was done with the session, I could strip the canvas off the stretcher bars because I didn't want to see it any more than I had to. I didn't want to take it home, so I'd strip the canvas off the stretcher bars and throw it in away <laughs> in garbage. Yeah. That's a little comforting for me to hear. Actually, I know where uh, I know where you're coming from with that. I had, I you were. Yeah. Not see it any more than I had to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, it's when you have students, I guess you see like all kinds of issues, as you say, like mindset or, you know, whatever they're. Well, everybody has different you know, sets technical of or whatever it is. Yeah. Different challenges. Mm -hmm. different challenges. And, you know, the, um, You know, I think the main thing is, you know, why did you start doing art to begin with? Because I guess because it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to keep that fun in it. Right. You know, not always easy every day. <laughs> um, and so when you're selling paintings, I mean, is that still, I know you have to, like, do you worry about what? um people what the market wants or what what you think is sells like you know it's you know, it's, it's funny that way i you know i can't <laughs> um what sells what doesn't what you know yeah. um you know i i <laughs> i generally yeah. try, try to paint what i want to paint and uh, that is what usually connects with the yeah, viewer. If I'm emotionally connected to it, I usually do better work. Yeah. You know, if I'm not emotionally connected to what I'm painting, you know, I can do a painting, but I'm, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't think it'll have nearly the amount of power that I, you know, um, I was with a gallery in Park City and they were, I was doing the converse tennis shoe paintings through them. Yeah. And they were flying out the door. And so, you know, in Park City is a ski resort. Yeah. They asked me, could I paint ski boots? And I'm going, I don't ski. <laughs> I, I don't have any connection to a ski boot. Um, yeah. I just, I, you know, I said no. And they pretty much got rid of me after that. But Yeah, but so, it's it has to be something that, that or, yeah. you have, that the artist feels a passion for. So, so. you know, it's, yeah. You know, it, so, you know, I, I think years ago, I had a, I had a, sh I had this one show in Seattle and um, a friend of mine talked a very influential gallery owner to come and see the work. And, um, and he was talking to me and he goes, you know, you paint such a variety of subjects, but I can tell the same person painted it. That I can't sell your work, but it's museum quality. Oh, wow. Well, see, I think it's, it's always interesting. I think oftentimes if you 
they galleries are I think comfortable if you paint one thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They get to know you for that one thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's fun. It's funny. Sometimes they steer you, steer you a w ways to go, and and it's sometimes it's not necessarily what you may want. Right. Uh, that one's over. Thunk. And let me see the finished painting. And eh. I'll show it. There you go. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, the thanks. colors. Yeah. It's We'll see if it survives a day or two. <laughs> I'm not tied to it, so I'm not. Uh, there's some things. That, there's things I like, and you know, to, oftentimes I, like I said, I used to carry the utility knife with me. Sometimes I don't destroy things right away. I I will turn them away from me for a while. Okay. So, yeah. So, so I'm not because I can. Sometimes I can be too connected to it, mm -hmm. and oftentimes do you ever know people tend to believe bad things about themselves quicker than good things yeah this is a general rule yeah so i sometimes if i look at this i you know if, depending on how i feel i can i can get into the what doesn't work mindset and so mm -hmm. then i look at it and then it all doesn't work right right start looking at it okay what works if i ask you a good question what works no, oh, this I like sort of this passage through here. And I like how this works. And you start looking for what works, <laughs> you'll feel better about your work. And two, it's a good thing to know because I've seen in class when people always look for what's not working, that's all they mm -hmm. see. And so they will change what works in a painting to what doesn't work. Right. Because they're focused on. Okay. So your paradigm looking for what works. And if you start looking for what works, more things will work in your in your painting. Is that how you approach student critiques? Like um, if sure. we'll be doing, you know, work and and is that a, a way that you approach it with people mostly to tell sure. them? You get a sense of who you're critiquing to. You know, I don't want to make anybody cry. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that happen to you. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't. I was just, I thought, oh, it'd be a good idea to have the person up with me in front of the class and we can critique their work. And it was way too much pressure. Right. That was like, hmm, not a good idea. Don't that was it. that was in, in your do, first. Don't do that again. Yeah, no. It was yeah. too, much, too much pressure. So like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it always, it's always funny, you know, different people, different experiences, what, yeah. Um, I remember I was figure drawing class and I had one student that was uh, disruptive and I had <laughs> I had the I knew this one girl's name and I called her name and I moved her to where he was and put him him where she was and she thought she would have been, she was in trouble. And I said, uh, no, I called you because I could I could remember your name. <laughs> it was a new class and she was a student of mine. It's rather than having to go, hey you, you know, yeah. somebody's yeah. name. Yeah. So let's see here. Cool light. I'll do the cool light thing here. All right. We have a we have a few minutes left. We're oh we're well, pretty I can, close. I can zip through here. All right. Mm -hmm. So this has got your cool light on it now. And you've you've put warm over the blue to get the warmer shadows. Is that I'm putting warm warm shadows in. Yep. Okay. Thanks. You know, I, I when I edit this, I take the audio out. Yes. I got music then you going. can talk. Yeah. <laughs> I got music going. I'm probably singing off key. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had my headphones on, I would be. But my iPad won't let me listen to my music while I record. So. Oh, I didn't realize that they don't. I didn't that realize they that. Do that. Yeah. And so your base color, you put like mostly a an all over color of of the skull head, like in the light. It's sort of one color to start, and then you put you continue to refine it. Is that what? 
Uh, well, yeah, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to block things in simple to begin with. Okay. It's like, you know, when you're, you're working large concepts to smaller concepts, okay. you know, cause you know, if you got, if you hired somebody to build it, build your house and you know, and you're going, well, you know, we should probably get a foundation. And he goes, man, but I am killer with trim. I do right. killer trim. You're going to lose trim off this house. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Your house falls down in a year or two. Yeah. So yeah. You get try to get the big shapes first. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. So this is obviously blue, blue light, cooler light. The orange on the left side of the skull really looks glowing already because you've got the cooler temperatures, I guess, in the light part. There's that. But uh, oh, that was quick. And let's oh. see. Yeah, that's it. This is. Are the, you able to put them side by side, Henry? Um, perhaps. I bet I could. Let's see. Find something. Come on. There we go. Let me. You that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, when you see them like that, you can really see. And, uh, you know, if I'd worked on this one the second time around, I probably would have pushed a little bit, get the chroma up in the orange here. Uh, okay. Even though, like I said, the, the LED light that I had on this was really, really strong. Uh, because it was such a strong light, mm -hmm. it was the blue and the orange, the cool and the orange was really somewhat killing it a bit. Uh, probably if I was to use that light again, I would probably back it off probably several feet. Okay. Because yeah. generally I've got, um, I've got LED fluorescent bank in my studio that I use for cool light. Okay. That I can rotate. It's from the ceiling and it runs on a cable. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. So. so I guess there's all kinds of things we can, uh, We'll be learning from you in the mentorship from setting up our studio to painting temperature to. Sure. Um, stop sure. Yeah. Stop oh, sure. Yeah. Cindy yeah. said that she painting. had to stay muted because she has a noisy dog. I know all about that. Would you say that every color has a tendency either to warm or cool temperature, but depends what's around it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm looking very red tonight. Purple out the windows. Yeah. Cool, yeah. cool light. Let me see the edge of that. A warmer, warmer temperature. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, it's so, like you, it's like I like painting people under a cool light. You can actually see their skin color. Okay. You know, because we've got yeah. lavender undertone yellow, yellow. Yeah. Ooh, yellow. You're looking at. Are you looking at everyone's uh, skin tone here, color? Yeah, and yeah, that's great. You know, I have I have seen people that were blue, so yeah, whole yeah. range, whole range of colors. So I never I never mix prior to painting. I don't you know like I know there are people that do the the systematic mix out all their colors prior to painting. Yeah. Uh, way and the way I was taught you know it's sort of you you work you work from life and you work from observation so you know first you so know Henry um how do you keep your color clean do you use different brushes or oh uh, no I I I now on those paintings I used around brushes um I think I had a I think I had a 12 a 10 and an 8 so, and you just put them in the gamsole in between to clean the colors yeah. off, or you know, I've got paper towels. <laughs> Generally, what is sort of like building building good habits. Um, let's say I mix a color, right. and 
working on a painting, I'll put it up in the painting. Um, you get one stroke, right? Then you've got to clean, either wipe your brush, because oftentimes you pick up residual color off of the painting right. onto that brush. So now you've contaminated it, so you need to clean it. You can wipe it or clean it off in the capsule. But sort of learning sort of that, you know, one stroke, one stroke, clean, one stroke again, clean. Um, you yeah. know. And that keeps your color. Well, I I Debbie's and my wife says I should do a demo of uh, color mixing. Yes, I thought about that today when I mixed that. And yeah. I, what I would like to do, I, uh, I'll do a color wheel demo on my palette, and I'll film that. And I'm just going to jump in for a second on your meeting. Sorry. Hi, Debbie. The reason I want all of you to see that demo is I've been an artist for 30 years, and I've never seen anybody do what Henry does on color mixing. And I heard somebody ask the question, what he does he mixes his colors in such a way the colors stay clean rather than dirty. Literally, the colors he mixes together and the way he organizes his palette pulls adjacent colors together. And so if he shows you that demo, it's pretty eye-opening. Oh, good. Well, then we can look forward to that in your mentorship. Thank you for telling us that. Yeah. So it's something we'll we'll look forward to. We'll ask you for that. Uh, well, I will. I gosh, I could probably do it next couple of days. So yeah, I will shoot shoot a demo of it now that I've you know I've practiced with the camera this week. Yeah. All right. Well, we're we're at our hour. The time went uh, fairly quickly just watching you paint. So that was great. Thank you so much. Well, thank everybody for showing up. So yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for being here and uh, look forward to seeing you, uh, you know, whoever can join us on November the 1st. That's in a week. Yeah, yeah not now. not far away. Yeah, far away. yeah. I believe. So, Have a good weekend. Yeah, thank you. And regardless of, you know, paint from love, never fear. Good to remember. Thank right. you.